Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. The story is entitled, Lucifer Heads North. This is the story of PFC Lucifer McWilliams and the men of a lonely radar station who set out to rescue the survivors of an airplane down in the vast wilderness of our northern border, Alaska. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young man, if you want to be the sort of man that others look up to, you'll get there fast if you can qualify to join the Army. You'll see a change from the very moment you put on the uniform of a United States soldier. You'll not only stand straighter and taller, you'll walk with the sure tread of a man who knows where he's going. Your training in the Army will give you the confidence of a man with an important job to do. You have to pass the mental and physical examinations in order to get in this oldest military service in our country. But once you're in, you're on the way up. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's a recruiter there who'll be very glad to tell you all about what's in it for you when you join the Army. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Lucifer Heads North. Alaska not only has the sound and feel of the frontier, it also has the names to go with it. Anchorage, Yukon, Rampart, Big Delta. Take Big Delta... That's a name with a big meaning to our Alaskan command because it's there the Army and the Air Force have their vital indoctrination school, an extensive four-week course attended by every soldier and airman assigned to that theater. There he learns the finer points of how to take care of himself in rough Arctic weather and tough Alaskan terrain. And so it was that PFC Lucifer McWilliams came to Big Delta, absorbed the ABCs of deep northern survival, and one fine snowy day found himself standing at attention before a hard-bitten major. That is, McWilliams. Captain Martin tell you anything about this? No, sir. He just said to get over here on the double, so I got. Mm -hmm. Well, from your record, it appears that you take to this kind of duty. I like it fine, sir. You'd never been on skis or snowshoes before you came here? No, sir. I'd never seen snow, neither. All my life, I'd been wanting to see some snow. (laughs) Well, seems like you got your wish in a big way. Tell me, McWilliams, did you become a medic by preference? I most surely did, sir. My pappy always used to say I had the gift of the healing hand. Well, I've got a job for you. It's as rugged as they come. I don't mind telling you we've only got top men on it. Sounds real interesting, sir. Come over here. This is the territory you'll be going to. Base headquarters is located here, in the valley, see? And your post is up here on top of this mountain. From what I gather, the accommodations are not exactly palatial. It was begun last summer. Now that winter has closed in, all building has ceased. You'll be the only medic. There'll be no doctor unless there's an emergency. Then you can have one flown in. You'll have 24 men to look after. And between times, you'll be doing guard duty and anything else that comes up. How's it sound to you? Why, Major, sounds like I'm going to find out what it's like to be a polar bear. I wouldn't doubt it. Now, as you know, these guys... The outpost, perched on a mountaintop, overlooked a vast, corrugated sea of whiteness. It was no more than a small cluster of tents in odd-shaped buildings, huddled close together against the Arctic winds. But amidst the cluster were grouped strange-looking radar nets, patiently fishing the sub-zero air and revealing the outpost's purpose. One of many, it was a small but vital link in the defense system of the Alaskan Command. Here's that report, Lieutenant. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. Did you get our brand-new medic fixed up? Yes, sir. 
Don't sound so sad, Sergeant. He's green, sir. Awful green to be up here, just out of indoctrination. Look, he wouldn't have been assigned to us if he didn't know his stuff. The only thing he's green to is this weather. <laughs> and he seems to like it. Yeah, you'd hardly figure a man who had lived where it was so hot all his life would want to live where it was so cold. Yeah, especially with the name Lucifer. Lucifer, son of the morning. Yes, sir. All six foot three of him. <laughs> Hey, hey come the, on. Close the door. Shut that blasted door. Can't you ever come in the right door? Well, Lee, boy, a little fresh air is the best thing in the world for you all. Uh, Besides, the wind's just as tarnal strong around the other side. Uh, Lucifer, did you learn any more Eskimo talk? Well, I'm picking it up a mite at a time, but you know, Dan, that is the most peculiar way of talking I ever did hear. Yeah. I sometimes wonder how them Eskimos got to know it themselves. My pappy told me once about an old Indian used to live away Lucifer? back in the bayous. Huh? You mind if I ask you a question? Huh? Why? Why, sure. Sure, you go right ahead, Dan. Lucifer? Where'd you get the name Lucifer? Well, when I was born, my pappy took one look at me and said, I don't know what he is, but he sure enough looks like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, after that, there wasn't anything my ma could do but call me Lucifer. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a nice name, don't you all think? <laughs> Oh, good morning, sir. How are things going? Well, going just fine, Lieutenant. This living up high in the cold must be right good medicine. Hasn't been a sneeze around here, and I don't know when. My pappy always used to say there wasn't no place more life-preserving than the deep bayous, but I got him one beat. I'm glad to hear it. You like it up here, don't you? Oh, I most certainly do, sir. I must have some icicle in me somewhere, but where I got it, I don't rightly know. Well, come spring, we'll be enlarging the post, and you'll have a chance. Mark's just picked up an SOS. Plane down somewhere north of here. They couldn't get it up on scope before it hit. Come on. What do you got, Marks? Well, we're trying to get a fix, sir. They're still sending, but it's awful weak and tough to locate. How are you coming, Lee? I don't know yet. Have they identified themselves? Uh, civilian planes, sir. Four men aboard. What kind of shape are they in? I well, don't know, Lieutenant. Signal's very weak, getting weaker. If we don't get a fix, it won't matter what kind of shape they're in. Is any luck, Lee? Uh, so blasted faint, I can hardly pick it up. They didn't know their own location? No, they weren't sure, sir. Got lost in the storm. We didn't pick up their call until just before they hit. No chance to get them on the scope. I can't hear them anymore, Dan. Did you get a fix, Green? I got one, sir, but I wouldn't bet on its accuracy. Could be way off. Let's have a look. Uh, somewhere right in here, I make it out. Oh, certainly picked themselves some rough country to go down in. It's about 50 miles northeast. Uh, through the air, sir. Yeah, I know. How far off could you be on this thing? Hard to say. Maybe as much as 25 miles. It's awful tricky to try and nail down a signal like that, sir. But if anyone could do it, Lieutenant, he could. All right, you two stay on it. Maybe you'll be able to pick him up again. Keep trying. Come on, Sergeant. We've got to get a call through to the main base. Sit down, men. Now, this is the pitch. There's no telling how much longer this storm will last. That means air rescue is out until it's over. We happen to be closer to the wreck than any other post, and the only possible rescue will have to be made on foot with dog teams. Now, I've gotten permission to make a try, but it's strictly a volunteer detail. It'll be a five-man party with an Eskimo scout as guide. I'm leading the party, and Sergeant Stewart will be in charge of the post while I'm gone. Now, all I need is three more of you to go along with me. Uh... Lieutenant, sir, could I speak my piece? Go ahead, Buck Williams, and make it snappy. Well, there's, there's four fellas down out there somewhere, and to be sure, they must be banged up some. Now, if you had a doctor here, he'd be going along with you. But you don't, and I'm the next best thing to it, and I rightly think I should get the pleasure of going. I can break trail with the best of them, and I'm no slouch on skis or snowshoes. I can even talk some Eskimo. Almost as good as our Eskimo guy can speak English, I'll bet. Well, maybe not quite, sir, but... The point is, you've got 20 men here that you're responsible for. Every one of them, fit and fine. Did you ever set a broken bone, Lieutenant? You know what to do for a fella if he's busted up inside or in deep shock? If we find them fellas, they're going to need the best we got. And when it comes to patching them up, I'm the best you got. Not meaning anything disrespectful. <laughs> McWilliams, you missed your calling. You should have been a lawyer. What do you think, Sergeant? I'd say you had a point, sir. I can take care of things here. All right, McWilliams, you won your case. 
Makes sense. Get yourself ready on the double. Listen to that bird. I think he was going on a picnic. Yeah, this is one picnic a polar bear would turn down. What'd you volunteer to go for, then? I'm not a polar bear. <laughs> Neither am I. So stop your groaning and get that stuff ready. Right. Hey, Lucifer. Huh? How you coming? Oh, this rebel's ready for the trail. Yeah, one we can take turns making ourselves. Why, didn't you know, son, that I'm the best little old trail breaker from here to Louisiana? Hey, you guys, cut the cab and come on. <laughs> Green, Mark, you'll be responsible for the radio equipment. It's to be packed here on the number two sled. McWilliams, your supplies will be packed there, too. Food and other equipment will be evenly divided between both sleds. Now, gather around this map. According to the guide, our best bet is to cut down this ravine till we hit the river and then follow it to here. We'll cross at this point and head northeasterly. The going shouldn't be too rough until we hit the foothills here. We're going out in the worst possible weather on the worst possible kind of trip got about a 50 to 1 shot that we'll find what we're looking for. An utterly white world where survival depends on knowledge and coolness and courage. And somewhere in it is a wrecked plane and four men waiting, hoping, praying. Bob, you think anyone heard our call? Bob, you think somebody heard us? Bob, they... Take it easy, Shore. Take it easy. Sure, they heard us. Sit here and wait, that's all. Wait, Bob. I can't wait long. I, I tell you, I can't. And inching along the frozen waste, five men, heads bowed to the lash of the storm, searching, searching. Lieutenant, we found a good place to make camp. Cave. How far? Just a short piece, sir. Those cliffs ahead. Good. The wind is picking up again. Is the cave empty? Yes, sir. The guide had a look. Okay, lead the way. Marsh! Marsh! How are you coming, Marsh? Almost ready to give it a try, Lieutenant. Good. Let me know when. Dog's all right, too, Mark? Dog's fine, Lieutenant. Get sleep. Ready to mush. What are you looking so sad about, Green? How can we ever find them in time, sir? What do you suggest, then? Uh, I don't suggest anything, sir. Except that we keep going. Well, then stop feeling so sad about it. We've covered ten miles. That's ten miles to the good. That's ten miles closer to rescue. Maybe, Lieutenant, but I'm not betting on the position. Well, that's the chance we take. All we can do is take it and hope that we're right. It's possible this storm will blow itself out tonight. If it does, the planes will go out and find them quick enough. Oh, my, my. All the comforts are home. Oh, Lucifer, fix the covering. Let's keep the wind out where it belongs. Well, huh? I beg your humble pardon, sir. I remember one time... What did you find, I... McWilliams? Well, Lieutenant, I didn't want to go too far, and that wind out there didn't want me to go anywhere at all. Now, my pappy McWilliams. used to say... Yes, sir. Appears like there's a draw running down all the way to the river. Shouldn't be hard to get down through it. Did you go as far as the river? I got down to it, but I didn't go on across. All set, Lieutenant. Good. Give him a call. Baker 05, Baker 05, easy three calling, easy three calling. Go ahead, Baker 05, over. Easy three, Baker 05 receiving you. Go ahead. Okay, Lieutenant. Now, this is Lieutenant Bond. We're holed up in a cave just above the river. Estimate our position approximately 10 miles northeast of you. Request latest weather info. Over to you. Easy three. Easy three. Baker 05 reports. Storm to continue for at least 48 hours. Headquarters request to no condition of your party. Over to you. Baker 05. Notify headquarters party in A1 shape. Moving out at 0400 hours. We'll call you at 1800 hours. If unable to make contact by voice, we'll use key. Over. Message received, Easy 3. We'll stand by for your call. Good luck. Over and out. Thanks, Baker 05. Out. <sighs> now let's get some chow and hit the sack. We've got a rough road ahead. <laughs> Easy 
You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Lucifer Heads North. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. A man with money to invest doesn't splurge it wildly on the first thing he sees. If he's wise, he looks around and decides on a solid stock, one with a past history that's always been progressive, a stock with a real future. All right, let's say you're a young man, a high school graduate. You want to invest yourself in the best future. Well, the United States Army offers you the best opportunity for your investment. Your dividends will be high as you become a part of the world's greatest army. In travel, in schools, in scientific advancement and technology, you'll reap the reward of your investment. Even more satisfying, our country will share in a mutual benefit. Visit your local recruiting station today. Invest wisely in your future with the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Lucifer Heads North. Any man who has served in the Alaskan Command will tell you there are three cardinal rules to be followed. Keep dry, keep your clothing loose when you're doing anything strenuous, and don't get overheated. The first two take only a certain amount of carefulness. But when you're breaking trail, when you're fighting your way through blinding snow, you not only get overheated, you become exhausted. And then every bitter step of the way becomes a battle. All right, we'll take a break. Schumach, halt your sled. There's no shelter here, Lieutenant. We'll squat down here by the sleds, get our wind, and then go on. Not gonna make camp here. Lee, get your pocket tightened up. Oh, you take care of your clothes. I'll take care of mine. Son, you do as I'm saying, or I'll do it for you. Green, do as he says. You know better than that. Keep your clothes tight when you're not moving. Schumach, what do you think? Not so good, Lieutenant. Dogs need to stop soon for good rest. Him and me both. Uh, gather around while I get out the map. Any change in the terrain ahead, McWilliams? I don't rightly reckon, Lieutenant. Yeah. Now, this is where we were this morning. Once we get in the lee of these mountains, that should give us some relief. Now, Lieutenant, I do declare I must have some Eskimo in me somewhere. Well, worry about your ancestry later. My pappy always said I was part bird dog. Want I should go ahead, Lieutenant? No, you've broken trail more than your share. Green and I'll go ahead. I want to keep in visual contact at all times. I don't want anyone getting lost. And one thing to remember that might help. If you think that we've got it rough, think of how those guys at the wreck must feel. The wind seems to have died some. Where's Phil and John? They're getting more wood. <sighs> Waste of time. <coughs> Might just as well all lay down and go to sleep. Sleep for Cut good. that kind of talk, Shaw. We're all still alive, aren't we? Yeah, for how long? You saw my leg. Pretty, ain't it? Yeah. How much food left, Bob? No, no one will find us here except wolves. Oh, shut up, Shaw. I got more faith than you. No, it ain't faith. It's fact. I got fact. I've been laying here for... How long I've been laying here? You got the facts. Yeah, look at you with your arm all busted up, and look at me, more dead than alive. No, no one in all this earth ever find us. Look, if you want to give up, you go on right ahead. If you don't want to stay alive, go crawl out there in the snow. I won't stop you, but... Oh, I want to live all right. Well, then stop bellyaching. Stop bellyaching about dying, do a little praying about living. <laughs> you're, a, you're a real one, Bob. You're, you're Jim Dandy. No, I'm not giving up. Not right to the end. Which ain't far off. Well, I'll make it as far as I can. Now, knock it off and try to sleep. You need your strength. Lieutenant. Yeah, what is it, Mac? What have you got in mind? Fellas, we're looking for us somewhere on the other side of the mountain. If Green's fix was accurate. Either way, the quicker we find out, the better. True. You hear that, Bob? Uh, the wind shifted. It's going to clear soon. Then you and Phil and John can strike out. Don't yeah, talk nonsense. None of us could walk ten feet. Uh, when the wood's gone this time, that'll be the end. No, it's not gone yet. Regular bulldog, ain't you, Bob? Well, I can breathe, I can hope. I don't 
rightly think that snow feels very friendly to us. If it hadn't been for you, Mac, we'd have lost the second sled. I think I had some help, Lieutenant. My pappy always said it's the help you can't see that counts the most. I'll buy that. Dog's all right, too, Mac? Okay, Lieutenant. Ready to mush. Uh, let's keep going. Now, according to Green's fix, the wreck should be somewhere ahead in the valley. Undoubtedly, it's been covered with snow, and there's no telling how long we'd search before we could find it. Storm about over. Yeah, let's not waste time playing weather, man. We'll move through the valley. I'll fire my gun every so often. They're hunters. They'll answer it if they're there. <laughs> Sure. Sure. Yeah, I heard something. Phil, John, wake up. Done for. Oh, done I for. I tell you, I heard something. Wake up, you guys. Come on, you can't quit now. No, I didn't hear nothing. Nothing to hear. Lieutenant. I can see where the valley ends down there. All right, we'll keep moving and shooting till we reach the end. See anything, Chumak? Nothing, sir. Looks hopeless. Give it another try. Hey! Was I hearing things? From somewhere up there. Over there, Lieutenant. Up by those trees, I can see smoke. Come on, let's move on. I knew you'd come. I knew you'd come. I kept telling him. I kept telling Shaw. Shaw, Shaw, wake up. No, no, you just, you just rest easy, mister. Everything's going to be hominy grits from here on in. Lieutenant, as soon as we get the fire hot enough, we'll rig a tub out of this tarpaulin. A tub? Well, the three of them are suffering from mostly shock and exposure. Best treatment is to get them into the hottest water they can stand. What about him? Well, this fellow's got a broken arm. Not too bad. Put a splint on it. How about the one called Shaw? Oh, he's bad, Lieutenant. Leg all tore up, full of pieces of metal. Gonna give him plasma. Pulse is mighty weak. Well, you're the doctor here, Mac. You tell us whatever you want us to do. I'm going to try and get a call through to home plate holler when you need me. Well, you better sit down and take it easy, sir. You're fair tuckered out. What about yourself? Well, it's funny thing about me, sir. I just don't tucker. Come in, Baker 05. Come in, Baker 05. This is Easy 3 calling Baker 05. Easy 3 calling Baker 05. Maybe it takes a good man like Marx to make this thing click. All we can hope is they're receiving us, even though we're not receiving them. Clear sky, Lieutenant. Planes come soon. Sure hope they get to us. Didn't the plasma help? I'm going to give him more right away. It's his leg, Lieutenant. Those pieces of metal should come out. Could you take them out, Mac? Well, I'm no doc, Lieutenant. Just a medic. Dick, never mind that. Could you do the job? Well, I think so, sir. I'd need your help. You'll also need his permission. You got it, soldier boy. You go right ahead and do what you think best. Okay. Let's go. With the aid of a camp light, a tall, lanky, stone-faced medic goes deftly to work. The lieutenant who holds the light watches the hands of the man move quickly and surely. Only the sound of heavy breathing fills the tent. Outside, the stars gleam weakly in the cold darkness. A wolf cries. A man sighs. Another coughs. But for the rest, it's silent as PFC Lucifer McWilliams does what he can to save a life. The odds stacked heavily against him. And later, when it's done, and there's nothing left but to wait through the long night hours, the call keeps going out over and over. This is easy three. 
Easy three. Have located downed plane in position established by fix. Request immediate air rescue. Request immediate air rescue. This is easy three. What about it, Mac? We can't wait any longer, Lieutenant. Guide says it'll be snowing in another hour. I know, but can he last through the trip back? I don't know, sir, but I know he won't last long here. Even if they didn't get our message, you'd think they'd be out looking. Oh, we'll start getting things ready, Lieutenant. My pappy always used to... What's the matter? Well, I don't believe that this is the place for mosquitoes. But I could swear I hear one. Look! Look there, coming over the hill! Well, I do declare. Two of the prettiest-looking helicopters I ever did see. They see us, Lieutenant! They see us. Hey, you fellas, you hear that? You're getting out of here fast. <laughs> what do you think of that, Bob? Crazy old goat. I always told you we'd get out of here. <laughs> so you did. So you did. Hey, son. Hey, come here. Well, what can I do for you all? What's your name, son? Lucifer Mac Williams. Private first class, sir. Hey, you're first class in my book, boy. Hey, what'd you say that name was again? Lucifer Mac Williams. Lucifer, eh? <laughs> hey, you hear that, Bob? Hey, John. Bill. You hear what this boy's name is? Lucifer. Son, you may be Lucifer to everyone else on this earth, but you'll always be Gabriel to me. What's your interest? Is it radio, photography, motor mechanics, metal work? If you'd like to learn a highly skilled, well-paid trade like pharmacy, watch repairs, photography, motor mechanics, or electronics, there's no better place to learn than in the United States Army. The Army offers training in dozens of highly specialized jobs, jobs that will pay you well for the rest of your life. Many veterans have already used their Army training and experience to build profitable careers for themselves. Out of the skills the Army taught them, you can do the same. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Talk it over and find out what's in it for you when you serve your country as an American soldier. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>